I normally work with adults um, who struggle to make healthy food and lifestyle choices, but today I'm here to talk to you about teenagers and raising healthy teens. And I'm right here in the mix with you because I'm a 15 year old and an 18 year old. So I understand the struggles that we're all going through. Um, it's definitely, it definitely can be challenging despite our best efforts. So when our kids were little, we taught them tons of important things. You know, how to ride a bike and you know, the important things in their, in their early childhood. And as they get older, they start making their own decisions. They wanna show their independence. They wanna pick their clothes and their music and their haircuts, which is a battle I'm having right now with my kids. Um, and of course, their healthy, their, their choices for food, which sometimes might not be exactly what we would want them to, uh, to be eating. So what are kids eating today? Well, um, when I surveyed a bunch of teenagers, this is basically what I got. Um, if you're lucky, maybe cereal, orange juice, glass of milk, um, or mostly nothing, actually. That's what more of the kids or the parents have told me. Uh, maybe by mid-morning, they have a snack, granola bar, or something like that. Lunch, if they're having it at school, could be pizza, beef nachos. Maybe they go off campus and grab a Chipotle or some kind of you know, fast food type of thing. Snapple seems to be hugely popular. Um, I know my niece, she loves having fruit and fries. That's her, that's her lunch. Um, afternoon, maybe they need a little energy kick. So they grab a pack of tackies. <clears throat> um, Celsius, hugely popular. They go out off campus, grab a Dunkin' Donuts or a Starbucks. Dinner may be healthy because you've made it, right? So back home, hopefully nice home cooked meal. And before bed, they have a nice sugar rush, cookies or ice cream. So as you can see, there's a lot of carbs. There's a lot of high fat foods here. Um, some of these things might have ingredients that we really can't pronounce and we don't even really know what they are. So there's already some damage. It's already starting to be done um, in their bodies by having some of these unhealthy foods. And what's terrible is that the temptations are everywhere. This is no different for kids versus adults, right? We have the same temptations that they do, but it's, I think it's even more so because of social media and they wanna fit in and their kids, are, their friends are all going out, getting Starbucks, going to Dunkin' Donuts, you know, grabbing this and that, and they wanna fit in and, and they fall into, um, into some of these pressures that are out there and the marketing that's out there. These products are definitely marketed to children, especially something like, like Celsius, which I never even heard of until really a few weeks ago, <laughs> but it's hugely popular. Um, and some of these once in a while treats are now becoming mainstays in their diets and in our diets. Um, I remember when Starbucks first opened and it was like, oh, you know, maybe once a week, maybe once every two weeks, oh, let's go meet up at Starbucks and have a coffee. And now it's like an everyday occurrence. And some of these drinks, you know, some could be a little bit healthier, but there are a lot of them that are just loaded with sugar and, and chemicals, sweeteners and things like that. Um, so the marketing and the peer pressure is definitely everywhere. Um, and our bodies are actually made to heal themselves. You know, we get, we get injuries and, you know, get a cut and, and all the blood goes to that injury and we, and it, and it heals, right? We have a fever, our body cools ourselves down. A lot of these products start causing inflammation in the body and our body is trying to heal it and it'll heal itself. And it often does. So we don't necessarily feel the effects of the damage that some of these foods are doing until years later. It's very uncommon for kids to have leaky gut, but fast forward 30, 40 years, and uh, certainly all my clients have leaky gut and, inf and inflammation in their bodies, could be related very closely to the foods that we're eating. And the kids are meant to feel like, oh, my friends can eat this stuff. Well, why can't I? Why would I be any different? So supersized foods equals supersized teens. Um, as you know, I'm not telling you anything new here. One supersized fast food meal may have more calories than you need in an entire day. And our consumption of sugar has changed over the last hundred years. In 1915, the average annual sugar consumption was 17 and a half pounds. It's now 156 pounds per person. <clears throat> yes, that's an average and that's American consumption, but it's shocking. That's absolutely shocking. That actually equates to 25 teaspoons a day, which is this. We're eating this much sugar every day. 
So if you do that in grams, it's 106 grams. So remember that number. We definitely have a sweet tooth for sure. Sugar and artificial ingredients are changing our taste buds and increasing our desire for sweet foods. There are over 60 names of sugar um, in industrial foods. And the reason that's done is so that food manufacturers don't have to put sugar as the very first ingredient because nobody wants to have that. So they divide it up into different words, molasses, honey, dextrose, maltose, sucrose, corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup. So it's spread out among the packaged foods so it doesn't look like sugar is so high in the content. But when you start looking at the labels a little more carefully, you realize how much sugar is actually in some of the packaged food items that we're eating and our kids are eating. So in one teaspoon, one teaspoon of, um, it contains four grams of sugar. So it, we don't often think in grams when we're cooking, uh, we think in teaspoons. So, but of course all the packaging is done in grams. So it can be a little bit confusing. Um, and it's really added sugar, that's the problem. It's not sugar that's, a, that's naturally found in fruit and some vegetables. And there are correlation studies that have found that adolescents who are overweight are 70% risk of increase, sorry, who are overweight have 70% risk of turning into adults who are overweight or obese. Very sad. So surprise, lots of sugar, right? These are some of the normal packaged food items we might have in a particular day. So we, let's say barbecue sauce, which we know is, is sweet, um, but 11 grams of sugar in half a cup. I'm sorry, that's tomato sauce. Um, 16 grams of sugar in two tablespoons. So here's a tablespoon, two of these. I don't know when I have barbecue sauce, I'm eating way more than two. So 16 grams already just in their two, um, two teaspoon serving. Um, and look how they've divided up the, the sugars. You have high fructose corn syrup, molasses, corn syrup, pineapple juice concentrate, sugar, and caramel color, which actually isn't a sugar, but it's a known carcinogen. So some scary stuff that's in typical barbecue sauce. Um, let's say you want to be healthy. So you have a salad and you put some salad dressing on. Well, this one has 14 grams of sugar in two, two tablespoons. So if you look at the ingredients, they actually say sugar is the first ingredient. And you know, all of this is added sugar, even though it's not in the label, because vinegar and garlic do not have sugar. So all of that 14 grams of sugar is added, totally unnecessary. And let's say you wanna be healthy and go organic. So well, you get some stony fields, vanilla, low fat yogurt, but it's also 16 grams of sugar and three quarters cup serving and nine of that, they were at least nice enough to tell us that nine of that, nine grams are added. So these foods give us a quick burst of energy because of all the sugar and then followed by a crash. And that sugar is changing our palate and, and the way we consume it. And then we wanna have more sugar. So eating sugar actually increases our hunger and our desire for more sugar. So it's just a vicious cycle. So let's go dive, dive deep a little bit more into fructose. Sugar is actually made up of half dextrose and half fructose, but when we separate it out, that's done in a, in a lab, you can't go to the supermarket and buy a bottle of fructose, it's done in a lab. And it really changes the composition of the food. So it's often in baked goods, um, dressings, breads. Um, it's a very, very common ingredient in packaged foods. Um, fructose is known to induce leptin resistance and leptin is the hormone that tells your brain you're full. So if that's getting rejigged, your brain's never getting that signal, you're full. So then you want to eat more. And that's where the chance of, and risk of obesity comes in because your, your brain isn't getting that signal that you're full. And if you're eating, um, our teens are eating, um, lots of foods with fructose, they're just, there's, that's why the, the risk of obesity comes in because it just makes them eat more. Um, fructose is also known to cause fatty liver disease, insulin resistance, dementia, and leaky gut. And fructose increases uric acid build, buildup in the body, which leads to gout and high blood pressure. These aren't things that we associate with kids having gout, but fast forward, if they're eating these things all of the time now, and fast forward 30 years, they could be at risk for these illnesses that you know typically you find in much, much older people. So Nutri-Grain bars, let's take a look at some of the ingredients here. Um, I used to eat these all the time. I stick one in my kids' lunch boxes and then I would have one in, and I throw it in the car and just have it for an afternoon snack. So I, until I started researching all of this stuff, 
um, you know, I was a victim of, of this, these um, foods as well. Um, so there's sugar, there's dextrose, there's fructose, there's invert uh, sugar. Um, there's also natural flavors, which again are not a sugar, but there's nothing natural about a natural flavor. You can have up to a hundred chemicals in an, a natural flavor and still allowed to be call it, called natural flavors. Um, they actually were derived from some sort of natural source, but we're talking so many steps back that it's basically chemicals. Um, and there's carrageenan in here, which is actually a known carcinogen. That's just in the crust. Now the filling has invert sugar, corn syrup, apple puree concentrate, vegetable glycerin, and sugar. That's five different kinds of sugar. Oh, and by the way, there's methyl cellulose in here, which is a stool softener. Yum. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> um, scary. And uh, one bar, which is, has 13 grams of sugar, 12 of them are added. So the entire bar is literally sugar. It's the same as having five Dunkin' Donut munchkins. But yet the name is Nutra Grain. So we think we're led to believe that this is something that's healthy. There's pictures of apples on the box. We have to be careful of the marketing. We have to teach our kids to be careful of the marketing. Ketchup, um, same, really same thing. Um, high fructose corn syrup, corn and, and multiple versions of corn syrup. So we want our kids to be active and it's recommended that they do 60 minutes of physical activity each day. And even if they're achieving that, it's still important that they eat well. It's not an excuse just because they're being active that they can eat whatever they like. Oh, he'll run it off. He's going to practice. He can have that donut because you know it's not gonna do any, any harm. Oh, she's going to basketball today. It's fine. And we just have to be really careful because athletes just like everybody else need good quality protein. They need complex carbohydrates, healthy fats and a broad range of nuts, seeds for, for uh, well-rounded fruits, vitamins, minerals. Food is really information for our body. It should be as close to the original source as possible. Chicken is chicken. Chicken pot pie is not chicken, right? Apple is an apple, apple Danish, not the same thing. And we should be able to pronounce all the ingredients in the foods that we eat. In the average lifespan of 70 years, we have over 76,000 meals. And that's just breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's not snacks. So we have 76,000 chances to get it right or to get it wrong and to give our cells and our bodies what they need just to nourish us and take care of us well into the future. So we can all live healthy lives. Our cells hold a tremendous amount of information from toxins, hormones, viruses, nutrients, and stressors. And it's really important to give our bodies what they need to survive. <clears throat> I really like this quote from Dr. Mark Hyman. What you put at the end of your fork is more powerful than anything you will find in a prescription bottle. If you eat the right foods, the body knows what to do and you can regain your health in just a few days. This is so true. I have a client who um, I had suggested do some uh, testing to find out what she was sensitive to because she was having a lot of digestive problems and inflammation. She did, she got her list of foods that she should avoid. She eliminated them from her diet. Within four days, she was waking up without any pain in her hands and her feet or her joints. And she didn't have the digestive problems. She didn't have the bloat that she was having. And she felt like she could, she was stuffed in her clothes before. And she was already starting to feel that inflammation go down. And after two weeks, she lost four pounds just by eliminating foods that her body was reacting to. It can be just as important. I'm not saying not to go to doctors, but we don't always have to jump to a pill. We can use food to heal our bodies and to change how our bodies are reacting. But food is not the only thing that makes us healthy. The food choices alone, if we only look at food, we're neglecting to address the lifestyle factors that cause cravings and weight gain, poor sleep, anxiety, and stress and overwhelm. And our kids face this time and time again. They feel a lot of stress from the schoolwork that they're under the pressure from taking the exams. Some of them are in high achieving classes. They're worried. They have social media pressures. They have pressures from their friends. And it's no different than when we were kids, right? The pressures might be different and they're much more um, visible now on social media. Uh, but all these stressors lead to poor sleep. They're staying up late. They're, they can be overscheduled. They're running around to, with all their different activities. And if they don't know how to manage that stress, it can lead to, um, 
to a lot of issues, a lot of health issues. When we're sleeping, it's actually when our body detoxifies. It's when our liver does all of its work. And if we have poor sleep, we're, our body, we're not letting our body detoxify. Um, we obviously have a lot of tox toxins in the environment from pollution and chemicals that, that are around us, detergents and things like that, not to mention what we're putting in our body. So at night when we're re resting and relaxing, that's actually the, activating the parasympathetic nervous system when we rest and digest. And if we're not sleeping well, we're not giving our bodies a chance to, um, to detoxify. And poor sleep really leads to cravings of high, especially high fat and high carb foods because we're tired. So we want that pump. So it really leads into a vicious, vicious cycle and, um, and can cause poor concentration, which is really the last thing we want for our kids when they're in school. <clears throat> I like this cartoon. Tommy can't come, to, can't play now. He might be able to squeeze you in between soccer and piano lessons. How true is that, right? <laughs> our kids are busy. We can be stressed from that. So this is an exercise I do with my adult clients. It does apply to children as well, um, slight modification, uh, but we look at what is out of balance in, in our lives. Um, so for example, um, these are 12 factors of lifestyles, uh, lifestyle factors that um, affect how we live our lives. And if they're out of balance, they could lead to cravings and um, stress. So for example, relationships, let's say you have children who are going off to college or maybe going through, through divorce or separation, or maybe you're taking care of elderly parents. So our relationships can, you know, if those are under stress, we can, um, we can feel that and, uh, and feel, those, feel the effects. And we might end up taking that out in a bag of tackies or <laughs> thin mints. Um, we all know what the effects of COVID did on our social life and how stressful that was, right? Um, some people got COVID-19 and some people gained the COVID-19, right? So um, kids feel the, these imbalances as well. Um, and we need to restore what the body um, needs by giving, giving it what it needs from the inside out so it can heal itself. And that includes food and lifestyle choices. And without addressing those lifestyle factors, we won't really get to the true root of what's causing our kids to be unhealthy. <clears throat> but behavior change is really, really hard, especially without the proper support. So when I work with my clients, I work with them on setting SMART goals, which are specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. So saying, I wanna exercise more is fine, but is it really going to get you motivated and, and hold you to account? I'd maybe rather say, starting May 1st, I'm gonna to go to gym, the gym three times a week and work on weight training. Very specific, something you can check off, you know if you've achieved it, um, and it's timely. <clears throat> if we have an all or nothing approach, it could just lead to a sense of failure. I'm gonna to go to the gym every single day this week. And then Monday, by the time, you know, Wednesday comes around, you haven't gone at all, oh, forget it. Just, I'll, maybe I'll do it next week or maybe not. And we don't wanna have that sense of failure. We wanna have that sense of accomplishment. So we turn the, turn the narrative around. And I work with my clients on how we can do that. Um, and we can't really deprive ourselves of things because it just leads to cravings. It's the one thing, I'm never gonna have chocolate again. Well, it's the one thing that you're gonna go and have, right? So we learn to be empowered through education. We stand up to the marketing with some of the package things that I was showing you before. We start small and we build from there. And tiny changes really can lead to big transformation. So what can we do for our kids? We can educate ourselves and them on the food industry. We can learn about the chemical ingredients and what they do to our bodies. Learn about what's the difference between conventional and organic farming is. Um, animal and fish processing. You know, what's the, what, what do cows eat? What are cows supposed to be eating? Does anybody know? Like what's the natural? Grass, what are, what are cows fed in America? Corn, right. Why are they being fed food that isn't their natural diet? Because it's cheap, right? What happens when we eat all these tons of starchy foods like corn? It's not great for us. Well, is it great for the cows? No. So it fattens them up and, that, and they're stressed because they're not having the food that's good for their body. And now we're eating those stressed out animals. That's the conventional farming method. Might wanna consider grass fed, Beef as an alternative if you eat, if you eat beef. Um, what about chickens? What's the chicken's natural diet? Worms, bugs, grass, whatever's out in the pasture. 
what do we what is conventional farming feed chickens corn <laughs> same thing right so we need to learn about how food is processed conventionally in america uh, i'm not telling you what to do but just be educated and understand what you're eating and where the food is coming from um, what about genetically modified foods how are those affecting our bodies bioengineered foods are on the rise um, understand the difference between cage-free, free-range, pasture-raised, grass-fed, and make the choices that you want to make for your family. Uh, we need to eat real food, not food like some substances. Often foods, they're sold as food, they smell like food, they maybe taste like food, but are they really serving us? Is it really good nourishing food for us? We need to think about it and read the labels. Um, a great thing to do with kids is uh, watch some ex expose films. Um, Ernest, what was the one that you mentioned? Uh, what's it called? Oh, no, the film. Oh, the, human experiment. the Human Experiment. Okay. So I haven't watched that one, but I, I definitely am putting it on my list. These are some other good ones. Forks Over Knives, Cowspiracy, Seaspiracy, Super Size Me. That one's all about McDonald's. Um, the guy who ate McDonald's for 30 days. Uh, and What the Health. Very, very interesting films. And have a discussion with your kids about it. Oh, that was, those are all on Netflix. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Um, other things we can do are um, just eat together as a family. Um, be a good role model. If we're going out and getting Starbucks every day, that's really what our kids want to do. They want to emulate us. Uh, take teens to the supermarket, have them pick out fruits and vegetables. Let them have some skin in the game. Uh, make high quality foods readily available. Have a fruit bowl out, have cherry tomatoes, you know, and walk by and have a few of those rather than M&Ms, right? Um, the more they're there and the vis more visible they are, the more natural and normal they become. So we normalize these healthier foods as opposed to the not as healthy ones. Teaching our kids how to cook. The days of home ec are long gone. Our kids don't know how to cook. A lot of adults don't know how to cook. Learn together, right? Start small. Um, teaching, teaching them what the ingredients do to their bodies and even alternative meats and alternative um, foods, they do have some questionable ingredients. Um, especially with soy-based products, because uh, soy is one of the highest gen um, genetically modified foods in the United States. And, um, and same with corn. 90% of the corn that's sold in America is genetically modified. And a lot of people have digestive issues because of these foods that were really changed and altered in a lab. They could not have had the, alter the alterations done naturally. <clears throat> That's why they're genetic, they're genetically modified. So normally plants adapt to the soil. Let's say there's, there's drought or there's um, climate changes. Maybe the root system needs to go deeper to get more water. Maybe it's hotter. I don't know. The, the plants grow taller. Those are all normal adaptations that happen through the seasons, but with genetically modified foods, they're happening. They've changed them in a lab. They could never have happened naturally. And we need to understand what, what are these different types of plants doing to our bodies? All of a sudden, a lot of people have irritable bowel syndrome and they have food intolerances. It could be because the foods have changed and we're not, we're no longer in line. Um, the foods are changing in a different trajectory. Um, cook more and involve the whole family. Kids learn by doing. And kids also learn to love whatever we feed them. You know, in France and Japan, they don't have children's menus in the restaurants. What's on our children's menus? Pizza, chicken nuggets, hamburgers, not the healthiest. We're not necessarily setting them up for success when we're giving them these lower quality foods. If they eat what we eat and we eat healthy foods, they're going to learn to eat and love those foods and develop a taste for them. <clears throat> we can also look up the EWG website and find out what the clean 15 and the dirty dozens are, dirty dozen foods are. And that's the how much pesticide exposure and residue is on fruits and vegetables. So the dirty dozen tend to be a lot of berries, nectarines, peaches, strawberries, blueberries, blackberries, red pepper, tomato. Those are the highest, um, have the highest amount of pesticide residue. So you, you might want to think about buying those organic. The Clean 15, you don't necessarily have to. You can buy the conventional ones because they just don't have the pesticide residue. They're not as much of a worry. Save your money. You don't have to buy everything organic. And I'm not even telling you to buy anything organic, but just know what you are buying. Um, read the food labels together, as we can, you know, we know that how important that is. Uh, we can watch cooking shows, we can pick out recipes, let them make some decisions. 
uh, they'll be much more likely to be cooperative if they've picked out a recipe, if they started chopping and sauteing and boiling and participating in prepare, preparing the foods. It tastes better when you make it because you've put some blood, sweat and tears into it, right? And you learn from your mistakes, like, whoa, totally overseasoned that thing. Next time I make it, I'm gonna adjust it. And it's, it's a little chemistry game, right? But a good chemistry. <laughs> and we aim for progress, not perfection. Small steps, doing one healthy thing each day or each week is better than doing nothing. And we don't give up. We didn't give up when we were potty training them, did we? We kept going. <laughs> we kept going. We didn't go, ah, this is too hard. Forget it. You're on your own, kid. No, we helped them. And it took years sometimes, right? So we're not going to give up on teaching them how to eat, eat healthy and create healthy eating habits. So where do we start? We start today. We start somewhere. Today is day one. Um, eating healthy and being healthy is not a passive sport. We need to be active participants. Um, and so thank you so much for coming and for listening. Um, what I wanna do is have a little, little experiment here. You can open up your phones and type my email address, which is right here. It's Suzy, S-U-Z-Y at truewellnesswithin.com. And I would love for you to tell me one thing from that list that I gave you or something that you thought of while you were listening to this that you wanna to do to be healthier this week with your families, with your teenagers, with your partners, just anything that you think, drink one glass of water, uh, go to bed 30 minutes earlier, watch a film this weekend uh, with your family, read a food label, pick out something from your pantry of like a staple in your family's diet and look at the ingredients, research one thing that you can't pronounce <laughs> and see what it does to your body and let me know. And as a health coach, this is what I do. I follow up and I, I hold your hand, but I also hold you accountable and I can, we can have a discussion, you know, how's it going? What's the one thing that you did? What you did that this week? Okay, great. What's something that you're going to do next week? So thank you. And also as a thank you for listening, um, I put together this recipe book on um, recipes for living agelessly. And you can scan this um, QR code. Um, if you're at home listening to this, you can also just send me an email and I will send you the link for it. So I don't know if you can scan it from, from your computer, uh, but just send me an email, Susie at True, True Wellness Within. And you can download this recipe book and um, I also put in tips as to why those foods are actually healthy for us, why they give us the, the benefits. Um, and uh, these are things that, you know, a lot of this stuff really applies to adults, even though we're talking about teenagers. Um, I work with adults on, um, on healthy, making healthy food and lifestyle choices. Um, I have a six month program. I meet with clients every two weeks over those six months because behavior change is really, really hard. It's hard to do it on your own. And just like an athlete gets an athletic coach, well, people who want to improve their health get a health coach. And so um, if anybody is interested, you can send me an email. Um, I have brochures, I have business cards, um, and uh, take a look at my website, download the recipe book, and let me know what you think. Let me know what you make. If you tried any of these recipes, um, that would be great. So thank you. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah, send me send me one thing that you want to do today or this week and uh, let me know, you know, I'll follow up with you. And yeah. Do you want to share what you what you big sweet tooth? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> we all love food. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, reducing sugar is so hard. There were actually studies done that showed that sugar is seven times as addictive as cocaine. It, it, it's not our fault. Yeah. It's not our fault that we're addicted to these sweets. And especially. You didn't have sweets as a kid. Right. 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 Yeah. 
yes, okay. definitely. I know. Right, and they bring the kids bring it home. It's interesting that you grew up in India because in the studies of countries that had, that consume the most sugar, India, Israel, and the Netherlands were the lowest. Yeah, the U.S. is obviously U.S., Germany. Um, I can't remember what else were the highest. Um, so that's yeah, it's not really part. It wasn't really part of your childhood, but obviously here sugar is so prevalent and the artificial sweeteners actually like in diet sodas, they actually trick your brain and, and make you want to crave more because you haven't had that satisfaction of the sugar that you wanted. You didn't have that kick. So it's still looking for it. Your body's still like, where is it? I want that energy and get it. So now it makes, that's the problem. It causes you to overeat. And then that leads to obesity. Right. So, um, I mean, I actually brought some things to show, um, you know, like, we were talking earlier about different snacks. So this, what is this? A uh, fiber one 70 calorie bar. And if you look at the ingredients, I mean, most of them, you can't even actually pronounce them. Um, even though it's low in sugar, it's, it has sugar alcohols, which is, you're seeing a lot more, um, but there's palm oil, there's polydextrose, sorbitol, um, canola oil. We didn't even talk about the different oils, the highly inflammatory oils that are in most, most of the conventional products. Um, the oils, there are some good properties in oils, but the, the best ones would be olive oil, avocado oil, and coconut oil, um, ghee, if you use that. Um, but the conventionally used oils like palm oil, canola, safflower, sunflower oils, they're highly inflammatory. They're, they're put into such high processed um, uh, processing plants that they've lost all of the benefits. Um, and they really cause a lot of, that's where like a lot of the leaky gut um, issues come from and digestive problems. So removing those poor oils from our diet, which are often found in packaged foods um, and replacing them. Actually, I heard a funny thing that we actually needed, we need to do an oil change. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> like that. Um, but something like this, you can read the ingredients, apples, pears, and mangoes. So, I mean, our kids, our teenagers are probably not gonna have a snack like this. But, and interesting enough, this, um, this is from the UK. I lived in the UK for 11 years. And I remember when this product came out and uh, my kids were actually very little and eating these. And it just goes to show like in other countries, they can't use the ingredients that we're using. Like Cheerios in the UK or in Europe are very different than the, than the Cheerios that are here. Even the taste of the, the, ta the chocolate's different, the right, the right, the right. But there are actually ingredients that are banned in Europe that are in our products, you know, and why the taste, right, right, right. So there are some, yeah, I mean, these are just some things that I brought in. These are grass fed beef sticks. There are, there are products out there that are slightly healthier and they're all, they even say in the back, proud of these ingredients and they're there. You can recognize and you can pronounce everything here. Grass fed beef, garlic powder, red pepper, black pepper, coriander, <laughs> onion powder, white powder, nutmeg. I know all those things and I actually have them in my kitchen, right? Versus, you know, something like this that, you know, I don't have um, palm kernel, palm de polydextrose, calcium cassinate in my kitchen. I don't know what that even is. Um, so there are choices, you know, we can, we can fight back with marketing, you know, with our dollars, right? So, but about educating our kids and starting with them, starting when they're young so that they can grow and live vivacious life. Um, that's really the point of this. So um, if anybody else has any questions, happy to answer anything. If you wanna get in touch later on, uh, find out about my program, I'd be happy to do that. So thank you again. I hope you download the recipe book and um, thank you all at home for joining in. <laughs> Bye. Oh, okay. Do you need me to leave this QR code you up for? Yeah, I can leave that up, but do you want to just disconnect? I don't know. Stop share, I guess. Oh, yeah. Is it touch screen or no?